everybody, how you doing? It's Robert Rivera with another edition of Who's On First. We have a special guest, Don Bales. And Don Bales not only is an umpire, but he repairs baseball gloves. And we're going to chit chat with him today. So, Don, introduce yourself. Uh, Don Bales, live in Auburn, Alabama. Uh, been restringing gloves probably about 15, 25 years. Kind of accidentally started into it. I had a friend named Lenny Johnson. He saw me repairing my son's glove and asked me to repair his son's glove. He went to work the next week. Somebody in his office needed a glove repaired. He got him to bring the glove to work, brought the glove to me. I repaired it and then word of mouth spread. And over four or five years, I went from doing, I don't know, 20 gloves a year to about 300 gloves a year. So it, it became pretty big. What's the average price on the repair? Uh, for me, probably a total repair. Um, that's repairing every lace is and condition cleaning it and condition it's probably 50 bucks okay uh, 50 bucks that's not bad in each glove i probably have somewhere around 15 to 20 dollars in lace and gel's now about five dollars so i'm it's really just my man knitting is what i call it my man sewing this is what we call lace it's leather um usually comes Sometimes they, you can get them in the, the, the wrap there. It's all wrapped up. This is right. one of those. I order my lace out of uh, Lee Summit, Missouri, and different colors, reds, blues, different different shades of blue, different shades of red. Um, obviously, the natural, the black, the tan. Uh, what else they call it? Chocolate. If the player wants a different color, chances are I can find it um, in quality lace. I don't like putting a lace in a glove that I'm not confident in. So... Right. Do you condition the lace before you put it in or? I uh, okay. I use either Nakona NLT or Rollins has a conditioner. It's very similar to the Nakona. It does a very good job. It cleans as well as conditions, but also prolongs the life of the glove. Where a glove will get damaged is where the hand touches the glove. The salt in your sweat acts like sandpaper. So if you ever notice the palm of the glove wears out first, the inside part, and that's just because of the sweat. What gloves do you see the most? Catchers first baseman, one. catchers. That. First base and fit is number two, just because they are receiving the ball generally at high rates of speed. And especially the, the as the players get older, high school, college, catcher's mitts need to be restrung more often. First base and fit need to be restrung. A lot of times I'll just tighten a guy's glove up. Middle infielders really like to have a tight glove. Conversely, though, the outfielders like to have, have it so their glove will open up as wide as possible and still be firm. So if they catch it on the fingers, if they make a snow cone catch, they're able to control the baseball. Okay. But I, I do, I, I ask the kid or the player, what are you looking for out of this glove? So I try to work with them. And if it's not right, I'll readjust it and until we get it right. Because I know the importance of a glove to each individual player. Right. Um, you want it right. You don't want the kid to be out there worrying about his glove and the ball's hit to him and he's worried about his glove, he misses the ball. What's one of the most expensive gloves you've ever worked on? The gold gloves, very expensive. You know, obviously the A2000 series. All those gloves are, you know, very expensive. I treat each glove the same. I mean, I give it tender, loving care, um, whether it's a eighty nine ninety five glove or whether it's a, you know, three hundred twenty nine dollar glove. I try to do the best I can for that. Sometimes guys who've gone on to college and they get the very, you know, the college will give them an expensive glove. They still want to use the glove they had in eighth grade because that's the glove they've gone to battle with, that's the glove yeah. they're familiar with. Now when they play on TV, they have to wear the sponsored glove of, the, of whatever school it is. But right. that Tuesday game when the cameras are off, he's out there with his eighth grade glove. Any crazy superstitions with gloves? I used to have a mailbox on my front porch and that's where people would drop gloves off and drop their payments off. And when I repaired them, I would drop them off and tell them their gloves there. So this young man came, called me and said, Mr. Bales, can, can you fix my glove? And I said, yes. So the next week I get a call and he says, Mr. Bales, can I leave my glove in the glove box? And I'm like, oh, my gosh, what's wrong? What's wrong with this? And he said, nothing. He said, I just threw a one-hitter last week after leaving the glove in there. So I said, sure. So he put it in there. I didn't touch it. It just stayed in there. He dropped it off after practice, picked it up on his way to school, had, you know, had another good game. Can't remember what his – anyway, he, he did this every time he knew he was going to start. So he graduates. He's on his way to college. He's going to a big major college. Um, in the SEC and he comes to my house in the middle of the summer and he knocks on my door and he has a mailbox in his hand and he said Mr. Bales can I take this mailbox to college with me I looked at him and I said sure sure so we swapped out mailboxes his dad told me that every night before he would go to get ready to pitch 
he would put his glove in the glove box, close it, and pick it up the next morning on his way to class. He even carried the mailbox on the road. So he comes home for summer league after his freshman year, and he's going to play in the Cape Cod League. So after his playing days were over, he got drafted, and I think he got to the second or uh, to uh, Double A. Mailbox is gone with him everywhere he goes. Every summer league he's played in, it's gone. So finally, I ran into him. It was about a year after he had finished his baseball career, and I said, "You do realize it was you, and not the mailbox?" He said, "No, it was the mailbox. We just ran out of gas. The mailbox went all over the um, A ball, uh, rookie ball, Double A. Went with him, and it, I just thought that was a great." superstition yeah, uh, wow him. i mean we're talking about a kid that made a 4.0 at a major university a sprite kid but in his mind he thinks that it's a mailbox the mailbox and not his arm i love it and reason being not so much about baseball but i work at the post office so the mailbox <laughs> <laughs> kudos to him absolutely some of the tools of the trade i laced them uh, some gloves in my days this is one of the, the little tools here i never could find something to beat the glove with. I've had a little stick, some metal around here, just to beat the glove, beat the palm in real nice. The best way is for the player to break it in themselves. I get asked all the time, please break my glove in. If I break your glove in, I'm gonna break it in how I like it. It's gonna fit my hand. It's gonna be caught how I catch, not how you catch. Right. But what I used to do for people is I would just go get a bucket and get a, a cage at, a, at the batting cages and just sit there and catch pitch after pitch after pitch after pitch. Be, be it a mitt, first baseman's mitt, infielder's glove, outfielder's glove, and just catch. But once again, it's formed my hand. But I've heard all these crazy stories about soaking gloves in water, baking them, run over it with your car. Yeah. Go get it steamed. Don't do those. Do not do those. Look at it this way. Would you take a brand new pair of tennis shoes? Would you soak a brand new pair of tennis shoes? No, you wouldn't do that. No, no. no. Would you bake a pair of tennis shoes? No, you wouldn't no. do that. Would you run over a pair of tennis shoes with your car? No, you wouldn't do that. Then why do you want to do that to a $300 glove? Yeah. I actually had a guy run over a glove with a fire truck. He was a fireman, took it to the firehouse, and he backed the fire truck over it two or three times. It was, it was broken in, but it was flat. I mean, it was... <laughs> It was literally flat. Said, did it look oh. like this? <laughs> no, it, it wasn't even. No, it was. I wish it did look like that. It was. It was flat, flat. I mean, it, it looked like a paper plate. Um, what kind of glove do you think you should get? Um, one of the biggest mistakes I see is is parents buying a glove that is just too large for them to handle. You'll see a, a, a nine year old kid with a with a fourteen inch outfielder's glove trying to play shortstop. It's just, it's too big for them. If you look at a lot of major leaguers, they wear 10 and a half infield gloves. And this guy's 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, I mean, Chipper Jones used an 11, and he was 6'4", at third base. Right. I mean, so your little nine-year-old should use something, give them something to grow into, but don't give them a whole cow on their, on their hand. That would be my advice. There's no reason to give a nine-year-old a $350 glove. Absolutely no reason. Mm -hmm. Give them a good starter glove. Every one of these companies has a, a nice $100 glove that if you take care of it, it'll last for years. Right. How do you store your glove? All right. I would definitely clean at the end of the season. I would take it, clean it with saddle soap, take a rag, dry it off after you, you know, dry the excess off. I would condition it with either the Nakona NLT or Rawlings glove conditioner. I would put it in a plastic shopping bag for about two or three days. And then you take another rag and you just wipe off the excess. They actually make a glove sleeve now that, that spreads out the compression where okay. we used to use, we used to use shoelaces to tie our gloves up with. Yeah. Put yeah. a ball in there and shoelace tie it up. But now they have a compression sleeve that actually puts equal amount of pressure from the heel of the glove to the top of the fingers. And it, it, it's really good. Baseball now is 12 months a year for a lot of kids. Their yeah. glove never goes into storage. <laughs> I mean, it just doesn't, which is good and bad for me as a glove guy and an umpire, but you like to see kids play other sports. Well, I got, I got one for you that we didn't mention, and it's one that my wife loves. I said, I need to find a leather conditioner. And she says, well, why don't you try the, uh, let me see if I can get it into the screen. It's, it's Mary Kay Extra Emollient Night Cream. And I said, you got to be kidding me. It does the job. I was really, really surprised. And I actually reconditioned three catcher's gloves. 
So it, it got us through the year. They were like, Rob, wow, these gloves look brand new. I mean, it's the same thing, leather skin, basically. So I, I'm, I actually am going to start telling people, if you can't find conditioner, use, use a hand cream. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the original formula for the Mary Kay, and what we found out later, was she actually got that formula from an actual leathersmith. I'm writing it down now. <laughs> I am. I, I wrote it down. Extreme Molly at Night Cream. If you ever need some, just let me know. I just went to the sporting goods store here today, actually, and I bought six tubes of the Rollins conditioner. I bought every tube they had because when I do restring a glove, every glove gets reconditioned and they get um, the conditioner just to help prolong the glove. Right. And also do the laces. I'll, uh, I'll put a dab in the palm of my hand and just pull the laces through my hand so it gets right. Under. I don't know. I guess when we were when we were kids, we we knew about saddle soap and we cleaned our mitts and we cleaned our gloves. You ask a kid nowadays if he's ever cleaned his glove and they look at you, they don't know what you're talking about. You know, there's a lot of kids, a lot of dads that will do it, um, that will clean gloves. And you can tell yeah, well, gloves are taken care of. I mean, some of these gloves are, are not cheap. You can't be ordering a $350 glove every year. Hey, if you got it, you got it. Knock yourself out. I'm just saying, That's true. My, my standpoint, it didn't work like that. My dad, every year, pulled out the big old basket. And he said, hey, try these cleats on. We're like, I'm like, oh, those are my brothers. And he's like, if they fit, they're yours. And they fit, well, they're yours. There you go. Here's a wooden bat. And we're like, it's got two nails on it. You use it for practice. You don't use it for the game. And it's, just, right. it's just the way we did. I mean, guys, you have a glove and you want to take care of it. Take some notes down. And you can always reach out to Don. And he'd be more than glad, I'm sure, to share his, his wisdom of 20 years of uh, reconditioning gloves and Hey, listen, don't be afraid that, you know, it's 350 bucks, but if that glove, if you're really superstitious about your glove, like I was, I, I liked my catcher's glove. I didn't, never wanted to give it up. I think I still have it over here. I was, no, <laughs> I'm only kidding. It's a child's old catcher's mitt, but yeah, I mean, gloves are expensive. Equipment is getting more and more every day. It's getting more expensive. So it is. Yeah, save, save yourself some equipment, save yourself some time. What is the best glove you've seen out there? Is there anything that you like draw to a little bit? Or? I'm a big fan of Rollins and Wilson. I just think they make great gloves. To say what I think the best glove is would be my preference. The next guy is going to say, oh, man, I really like this model Rollins or, or whatever glove. Mizuno makes a great glove. Uh, yeah. It's kind of like a Ford Chevy thing. I like the Ford truck better than I like the Chevy. Or I like yeah. the Chevy truck better than the Ford. When if you break it down, they're really very similar. Yeah, uh, yeah. A4 is a big glove coming around now. A lot of kids are getting gloves personalized. They'll have their name, flag on there. It just depends on which company provides this. And if that's your main thing is, hey, which company will put my name on my glove? Then that's your favorite glove. That's, that's the one. I know. I had a preference over the Mizuno. When I played softball, I liked the Mizuno gloves. Mizuno, and they make a great glove. It was a light glove. It was a big glove. Um, I played second base when I played softball. And the, one of the biggest reasons that I liked it is the outside fingers had like a foam to it. So when I'm playing second base, I never really put my glove out to catch the ball. I would put my fingers out and then trap it because it was a big glove. So I didn't want right. to go deep into the pocket. I didn't want to catch and then have to go into the pocket. I would just trap it up against my glove and then be able to throw the first for that because softball is fast paced and those bases are short. The only reason I really love that glove is because it had a little funky padding on the outside. Some people like, uh, was it Academa at one point? I saw teams coming up with all these Academa gloves and I was just like, oh, okay, Academa. And now, uh, is it, was it, I can't think of the name, Nokio, Nokio, something like that. Nakona makes a great glove. Nakona. And there's a lot of other companies out there that are doing some funky stuff. I saw the white glove splash with all this paint on it. Crazy, crazy stuff. I remember catching with a glove that was so heavy and it was like steer hide and it was so hard. It was just well, like, I didn't a, like for Rollins. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't like it. Yeah, and it had, a, it had a little flap right at the bottom here and it's supposed to protect your wrist and I hated it. I hated it. And, and the only reason I didn't like it well, because of that, that flap here, it would drive me nuts. And on top of that, it was such a heavy glove. So you're lifting your hand. It's such a heavy glove. You're lifting it. Um, I remember, as a matter of fact, I just thought about this. The Lance Parrish catcher's glove with the big orange 
thumb what? and the outside. It had big orange, and I was like, I always loved that glove. I don't know what it was. Yeah. Hey, I've seen one of those a long time. I saw one, and I told my dad. I said, Dad, I want that glove. And he looked up, and he says, at $120, you got to be out of your mind. Imagine on $120 back when I was 14, 15. Oh, yeah. It was a lot of money. So you're sitting there, I'm, I'm like, bring it off yeah, yeah, you, you listen, your catcher's glove is just as good. We're going to put a little oil. Speaking of oil, that was another thing. I used, to, I used to oil my glove as a catcher. Always oiled my glove, kept it nice, kept it crispy. And one kid turned on, he goes, why does your glove look nice? I said, put, I, I always put oil on it. And he comes two days later to practice, and I'm standing next to him, and I'm like, why does it, why does it smell like fried chicken or something in here? <laughs> And he's like, oh, no. he's like, it's my glove. And I'm like, what do you mean it's your glove? And I look at his glove and it was a Ron Guidry. What did you put on this? He goes, you said put oil on it. I said, well, what kind of oil did you put? He said, Mazzola. And I'm like, oh, no, oh, not no. Mazzola. <laughs> he's going to have flies chasing him around the field for the rest of the day. That glove smelled like fried chicken. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's you know, what but see, that's what. That's the crazy thing is people just do things and they're like, my thing is to, to catch you from doing something is, would you do this to a brand new pair of tennis shoes? Yeah. There's no way that kid, your, your childhood friend would have put Mazzola on a right. brand new pair. <laughs> right, right, right. If you want to do something to your glove before you put some kind of oil on it, you go to the store and they say, oh, this is the best glove oil in the world. Do yourself a favor. You don't know what the chemical compounds are in there. You don't know what's on your glove. So what I used to do is I would go into the hand where my hand was right in here. And I would just put a little bit of that oil or whatever right in there just to see if it would stain it or discolor it or do something. So that way the whole glove doesn't get all mishmash. It doesn't look like, uh, how do you say, uh, what was that? There was a famous scene with the Seinfeld when he went into the snow with his suede jacket, <laughs> but oh, right. he lays it. yeah, and it was all oh, mismoshed and hard and stuff like that. Do a little experiment, but do it on the inside of the glove so nobody really sees it. That's where your hand's going to be. John, what, what tips do you have for everybody out there when they want to take care of their gloves and stuff? Um, I would strongly suggest cleaning and conditioning before the season. Suggest lightly or cleaning it and lightly condition it in the middle of the season. Just depends on how much you play, how much how much the gloves used. If it's used every day, obviously it needs to be cleaned and conditioned more. But end of the season, definitely clean it again and, and really condition it and get it ready for the next season. If you take care of your glove, it'll last you for years and it's your glove. So that that's my main thing. It's just it's just cleaning and conditioning. Here in Alabama and Georgia, we play on red clay and brick dust. So it, it's 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 hard on gloves. So my thing is clean it as often as as you feel you need to and, and condition it, I would probably say four times a year. Two big conditions and two light conditions, four four times a year. And that, okay. that'll help you out. Okay. All right. That'll maintain your glove. Yeah, you'll get a nice $350 glove that'll take your whole career, hopefully. If you take care of it, right. right? If somebody wants to get in touch with you, Don, how would they do that? They can, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm okay with everybody shooting me a text or giving me a phone call. Even if you just have a question and aren't planning on sending, my, sending me your glove, I have no problem in answering questions. Okay. You got your email? It's a B-A-Y-L-E-S, the number four, at bellsouth.net. They can email me. They can shoot me a text. They can give me a phone call. and I'll, I'll get back in touch with you as quick as I can. All right. All right. Well, thank you, Don. Thanks for being on. I appreciate it. Thanks for all the tips. I'm sure everybody appreciate it. Guys, if you if you want to get in touch with Don, I'll put the phone number on there. I'll put his uh, email address on there. If you need a glove reconditioned, I'm sure he's looking for some more business. I think he can afford that big fancy house he's got behind him there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I live out in the country, my friend. Live out in the country. <laughs> I love the country. All I right. Country. As we always say here on First, what do we say, guys? Keep swinging. Keep swinging. If you like the show, please do me a favor. Subscribe, right? Right. You see it? It's right there. Subscribe, share, like, and don't forget, put that bell on. And I'll ding you when I put something else on, all right?